through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 235. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for March 5th. Mm -hmm. We're already almost a quarter of the way through the year. I mean, sure. We'll call it. Sure. We're rounding up. If you up. want to do that every week, I want to I'll, round I'll, it up. I'll make statistical I want to do it every I week. I'll have them at the top every of Every week, notes. yes. Okay. Give me exact percentages okay. of the year. Okay. Okay. We are 48.75%. 950 <laughs> seconds, whatever that works out. You can do that math. Uh, it's sort of an interesting week for DVDs in the sense that there's a lot of good films mm -hmm. but kind of mediocre releases yeah like I really luster you would you would really have higher expectations for them yeah but, you know I mean I guess you take what you can get yeah. at a certain point I guess but, I mean we are get we are now in a March so it's we're starting to get the sweet earlier movies are coming out as far as theatrical releases but unfortunately well, DVDs you, you, should, are still I mean, you should be getting a lot of like those uh, like Oscar yeah. nominated stuff from O2 or 12, or 12, 12, yeah. 12, whatever. Uh, so you'd think that there'd be some better stuff coming out. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of, I guess, just right after the Academy Awards. So everyone put all their energy to get it stuff Probably. out before then. So Probably. there is one that I'm a big fan of this yes. coming out, and it kind of has an interesting release, and that is Wreck It Ralph. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the video game yes. story and sort of set in the world of video games and real yeah. life video games. There are a lot of characters inspired by real life characters, yes. but there's also a lot of fictional video games in yes. there. And sort of, you know, the journey of a video game villain as he tries to become the hero, mm -hmm. so to speak. And it's, I mean, it's got a, it was a great, oh, great it was release. A, it was a really fun movie. Um, um, I, I enjoyed it. It was probably as, I want to say it might be my favorite animated film of last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, ooh, I would say it's right, that and Paranorman were yeah, really I still right neck and neck Paranorman. for me. So I, 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 you could go either way. And I, I was really hoping fun. Brave would be, but it ended up being yeah, yeah one Academy was. Award though. So what yeah. that? Uh, it was interesting that unlike a lot of films, uh, a lot of animated films, Wreck It Ralph was uh, all the audio was done in groups mm. so that they could kind of interact mm. and which is good. It yeah. definitely worked for it. Yeah, definitely showed. And it, it's, I mean. It's also Disney. So, yes. I mean, you think about Pixar and Brave mm -hmm. not necessarily hitting it off. So, I guess yeah. Disney had a, a good release. Yeah. But in terms of this, you have the mm -hmm. Blu-ray 3D, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the digital copy all in one, which I like. Yeah. You have a uh, Paper Man, the short yeah. that was attached to it, which was wonderful and won the Academy Award. Mm -hmm. uh, with it, you have the bit by bit creating the worlds of Wreck It Ralph, uh, game jump through the worlds of the film with the filmmakers, artists, and animators who created it, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, you have a Disney intermission, the Gamer's Guide to Wreck It Ralph, hosted by Chris Hardwick, which wow. I think is pretty cool because there's so many video game oh, yeah, nods references and Qbert, all yeah. that sort of fun yeah. stuff. You it's know, probably Dolphin, just like that about a bunch of Zangief, yeah, a bunch of facts and um. That thing means this from this game, and yeah. that thing over there There's is this villain from yeah. that game. Um, you also have some deleted alternated scenes, and you also have video game commercials. Original commercials for Fix It Felix, Heroes Duty, and Sugar Rush, which are nice. the games that, that they made created fictionally. And in, in, in fact, Fix It Felix and Wreck It Ralph, they then went on to make actual video yes. game versions up in advertising of the yep. game. So you can find those on like iOS mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Originally, too. it was all supposed to be 8 bit too, but they changed the mm -hmm. graphic style because mm -hmm. they felt it would be hard to make uh, Ralph a lovable, character, sympathetic character with 8 bit animation. Sure, but. sure. But sadly, you know, there's no like commentary tracks. Yeah. None of the actors are giving any commentary, which I think would be very interesting because mm -hmm. it's a great film. A very and especially film. if they all did their, you know, record their audio in sessions. Like it might be interesting to talk about like what was improvised and you know things like that. Yeah. I always find that stuff interesting. One of the more interesting, less popular films in America, yes. but a foreign film nevertheless, mm -hmm. was The Untouchables. Mm -hmm. Not The Untouchables, Intouchables. Correct. The Intouchables. And this is the story of a uh, man who becomes a quadriplegic from a paragliding accent, uh, hires a young man from the projects to be his caretaker. Yes. Sort of to give you a perspective of like how popular this was worldwide, yeah. it made $410 million worldwide, theatrically. In America, though? <laughs> Ten million dollars. Yeah, it was so successful worldwide, though, that they're going to make an American version of wow. it. Wow, which is you yeah, know, whatever. N nine weeks after its release, French film uh, became the second most successful French film. I think it was the most popular foreign film last year at ten million dollars, yeah. which it is was, crazy to think. Yeah, the most successful foreign <laughs> film can only make ten dollars in America. Ten million dollars <laughs> yep. in America. Like, what? What is wrong with that? It was, and it's. it's I hear it's a very 
driving Miss Daisy esque, mm-hmm. where it's uh, you know you have an individual who needs help with somebody else across the tracks kind it's, of it's, thing. I mean, it's a very it's a very sweet story, and it's it's so. I mean, I had actually one film critic friend who said it was his favorite film of last year. So you know, wow. it definitely has its backing behind it. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one reason to check out. If you're looking to buy it, though, I'd be a little bit more skeptical because literally all it has on it is deleted scenes. Mm. That is all they included in the release. No commentaries, mm. no beyond sad. scenes, no. And you can. Uh, and then they're gonna remake it in America, and it's not gonna be as good. And it's gonna have like eight billion special scenes about it. Probably, yeah. Ugh. So it's just it's it's really <laughs> unfortunate. I definitely recommend going to like Scarecrow or your local video yes. store and checking out, you know, Netflix if you don't have anything nearby. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in terms of buying it, I'd be real yeah. hard pressed to be yeah. interested in buying it because of the lack of Yeah, unfortunately. Stuff. And I would I'd love to hear uh, the, the people involved exactly. talk about it because I mean, it clearly I mean they really hit a proper niche it, in the foreign it market. Hit a nerve. Uh, I'd hear, like to hear them talk about you know foreign films versus mm-hmm. American films. Oh, I don't know. It just it seems like there's some a lot of material to be had, but yep, they're not going to go there. Continuing on the uh, just <laughs> dumping of videos mm-hmm. or films to video is Red Dawn. Yes. This is the remake of the classic starring Patrick Swayze. Correct. Wolverines. Just mm-hmm. got to get that out there. This time <laughs> it's set in Spokane mm-hmm. with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. And you've got the, was it the, the Koreans? North yes. Koreans? Uh, it was originally Chinese, but they changed it to North Koreans. This is what's the sad part. They didn't just change it to North Koreans because, like, political problem or because they want to make someone happy or because it didn't work but because the movie is originally going to be released in november 24th of 2010 but it was shelved due to mgm's financial troubles and in post-production they changed it from chinese to north korean so that they could get chinese box office money to make back some of that money. not just that i think they actually got some chinese investors yeah, after see? the fact so i think that was part of the reason yeah. like we can't take exactly. their money yeah. and call They're them like again. oh i guess we gotta change the movie because it was so bad that nobody wanted to see it. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm not going to argue the film was a great or thing, but like, talk about like a collection of amazing talent yeah. before they started. Like, you have Chris Hemsworth mm-hmm. before he was in Star Trek and mm-hmm. Thor and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and uh, Josh, Cabin in the Woods or Red Run. Yeah, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. You have Josh Hutcherson from mm-hmm. uh, Hunger Games before he was in the Hunger Games, yep. obviously. Adrian Pel- was it Palicki? Mm, who was mm-hmm. going to be Wonder Woman for a while. Yes. I believe she was on uh, Friday Night Lights. I, I, so you, I mean, right. you have yeah. a whole bunch of like really young people. Yeah, young up-and-coming people in the movie remake of a beloved cl- 80s classic. Which was always going to be a problem. But, yeah. you know, I, I mean, there's something about, like, you can't call it Red Dawn unless you're talking, you know, yeah. the uh, Red Scare. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess... I mean, China has some red in their I guess, flag. And, and I guess, you know, North Korean is kind of communist, so you can still kind of go with it, but... It's, it's a different time. Like, you didn't have, like, the internet and stuff like that. Was yeah. it, it's like that, was it, um... That commercial with, um... Uh, the British are coming, the British are coming. Oh, yes, um... Gosh, why can't I remember the name of that movie? And it's not a movie, oh. it's just a commercial. It's like, I, for some cell phone oh, okay. YouTuber, and they have, uh, what's the name, um... Who's that guy who did the British are coming? The British are coming. Oh, Paul Revere. Paul Revere. They okay. have Paul Revere, and he's like in a house, and they, oh, he okay. sees the, the <laughs> like the light flashing. He flips up his phone. He's like, "The British are coming." Yeah. And then he like goes back to playing charades. That's sort of like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, if there, how it's can you true. really be that shocked? Like, yeah. everyone has a cell phone. Exactly. You can instantly be like, "Oh, the North Koreans are." I, I just one of the great things about Argo. I read a whole article about how the end end climax of Argo would have never happened in today's age with oh, cell yeah. phones. Yeah. It would have just been problem solved. Yeah. There's a, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Shut so, it down. Yeah. Shut it down. But you know, in, in terms of the release itself like they have the blu-ray digital copy with the or digital dvd combo yes. with the digital copy as well but literally no special features you have the theatrical had this blu-ray long special features and they didn't well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, you had the blu-ray on one disc and the dvd digital copy another and that's it nothing else like seriously like clearly they dumped this thing yep. in the theaters they shelved it for a while <laughs> yep. they're dumping it on a video like yep. they don't give a shit about this movie no they it's don't. not it's not very good like yeah. everybody knows that this <laughs> yes. was a mistake they just want to get it i'm surprised they, they even released get over it. it yeah i'm surprised <laughs> they even released on video like, i'm surprised it didn't come out video on demand like a week after don't. it was on theaters like yeah. just just watch it it, please. I mean, yeah, like some people pay some money. Watch it. Thing. Yeah. Like, I'm seriously like, I don't know why they bother, but. <laughs> Now, it's it's not the only one, though. No. Moving right along, mm-hmm. one that you would really hope would be a very special one yeah. is the 20th anniversary limited edition of Schindler's List. The uh, seventh, eighth greatest movie of all time, according to the AFI. The only movie in the last quarter century to make it in the top ten list on the AFI. I mean, it's... 
It's an amazing film. I don't yeah. know anyone who would argue against exactly. So you got all these, you got all that Nazis. credibility. <laughs> yeah, you got all that credibility and, and oomph, and it's what twentieth or twenty fifth? Twentieth. Twentieth anniversary. So at least something worth, somewhat worthwhile to do it. And what do you do? Nothing. You do yeah. nothing with it. You don't even criterion well, it. You he, don't. Like, you know, you don't have like I don't know extra like gas canister swag that comes with it or like a bucket of ashes. Or... You know, I sort of <laughs> that would be messed up. Dude. I know, I know. <laughs> that would I'm be sorry. that'd be pretty bad. Um, I apologize. But like you hear yeah. limited edition, you're like, oh, they're gonna have something yeah. sweet with it. And literally, as far as I can tell, the only thing that makes it a limited edition is it has the Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, and ultraviolet. Ooh. Yeah. Like that's it. Like in terms of special <laughs> features, they have voices from the list, a feature-length documentary with testimonies from those who survived the Holocaust. They to Oscar Schindler, which is great, and they also have the USC Shoah Foundation story of Steven Spielberg, which is like five minutes long, mm -hmm. which is also cool. Mm -hmm. But those two were already on the DVD released yep. years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Like they added nothing, <laughs> literally nothing. Come on, Spielberg, come on. Why well, couldn't you just jump in and, and like be like, hey guys, if you're gonna call it limited edition, let's put something new. Well, like I know he said he doesn't want to be like doing a commentary track, so True. it makes it about him. Ah, like I okay. understand that. Like that makes sense. Lucas, he is not. Um, yeah, but it, it's sort of like. You got. There's got to be something yeah. you can add to make Come it a special on, edition. Like, there's like it's the 20th anniversary. Can you like do an update to <laughs> yeah. the feature documentary? Yeah. Something Some, like anything. But it's just like wow, you're just falling yeah. in. Uh, I'm I'm glad you get all the digital copies, Blu-ray, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But if but you I already think that's have worth it, calling it a limited edition. Why if not? you if you haven't bought it already, maybe it's worth buying because you got that feature-length documentary. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But if you already own it, I wouldn't yeah. go and buy yeah. it again. So yeah. An yeah. unfortunate another somewhat of a dud. Yeah. And for such an amazing film. But those are the ones we're mentioning this week. Yeah. If there's something worthwhile, please let us know because <laughs> yes. we really, we're really digging deep yeah. to find stuff to talk about. Even though week. sometimes I will admit I like bringing up bad releases just sure, to and say, sure, what totally. is wrong with you sure, people totally. who made that movie and have way more money than Spencer sure, and I will ever see totally, in our entire life? Totally. But, you know, come on. <laughs> that being said, you know, join us for our next episode as we talk James Franco mm -hmm. in honor of Oz the Great and Powerful. Ooh. And as always, yeah, ooh. <laughs> as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm -hmm. Twitter dot com slash mcguffin cast mm. facebook.com slash mcguffin podcast phone number 323-761-9842 we're on itunes we're on blip.tv we're on miro we're on roku check in and get glue get some badges and leave we, us some reviews on itunes please do and comment we, on our youtube we like to we like the youtube commenting mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure mm -hmm. and uh catch you next time Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.